Fellow Dial Twisters, rejoice! Today I have a product for you that will not only satisfy your tactile tendencies, but give you more than a little boost in your system's performance. If you're already 100% satisfied with your audio stack, God love you. But if your system could use a little help, a little TLC, well, watch a little longer. Hi, I'm Bob and you are in the United States of Analog. And no, you can't have this shirt. This one is mine, <laughs> all right? Now, my 17-year-old son, who's sometimes my shooter and sometimes is my editor, but sometimes I do it all by my little old self, he says I shouldn't start my videos with a pledge drive. It ain't cool, man. So I'll just say, please do all the stuff you need to do down here. Press all the buttons, all right? Thanks, I appreciate that. And right now, we're going to take a look at the Duke Audio T8 Pro 7-band equalizer. But before we do that, I've got to start out by getting one thing straight. Here on the US of A, you will never hear me use the term chi-fi to describe audio products from across the seas that are available here at reasonable prices. Now, that term to me sounds a little dismissive and demeaning. After all, your Mega Atmos Jumbo AV receiver was probably built there as well. I think that we as consumers of these products can do a little better assigning the nomenclature. So I want to suggest to you a new term to use as a suitable replacement. Write this down. FunFi. That's right, FunFi. Trademarked it. It's too late. You can't get it. I own it. That's right, FunFi. I believe that products like the Duke Audio T8 Pro Equalizer fall into this category. So why do I call it FunFi? Well, generally these products are readily available, super affordable, and have a smaller footprint than traditional components. These products are great for aspiring audiophiles, new to the hobby experimenters, desktop audiophiles, music lovers looking for a lot of bang for the buck. There's little financial risk in going with some fun five, and it's a great way to determine what you might like to buy down the road when you hit the Powerball jackpot. And when you do, don't forget about me, all right? FunFi is good also for small spaces where a full-blown system would just be overkill, like a, like a bedroom, a, an office, a panic room. You do have a panic room, don't you? But be aware, the, the QC of FunFi components might not be consistent across the board and may, may lack certain features. For instance, a limited number of inputs or uh, maybe a power supply that just isn't up to the task. You also need to take any specs or measurements with a grain of salt. If a $100 amp boasting 300 watts a channel sounds too good to be true, well, I'm just saying trust your spidey senses. But there are many standout products in this newly coined by me category. How about the Fozzy Audio V3 Power Amp? The Duke Little Bear Switcher with VU meters. Ooh, VU meters. I have both of those units over there. Uh, and now I'm going to place the Duke Audio T8 Pro in this category of esteemed Fun5 products. Now the T8 Pro came to my home courtesy of Cheap Audio Man. Thanks, Randy, for sending it to me. I applied it in my home jazz Kisa bar. I built with my own two hands, well, with the help of a few friends too. The DIY video of this, this super cool space can be seen elsewhere on my channel, so seek it out. Now, one of the main features of that room are Klipsch Heresy 3 speakers that are permanently installed, semi-permanently installed, high on the shelves. You might see the bottom of one behind me. They sounded pretty good in, in the room from the beginning, but since they couldn't be moved all that much, I knew I was limiting their potential. Enter the T8 equalizer. It was super easy to install at my turntable station, being fed by my Techniques 1200 M7 turntable into the shit Manny Pre. I utilized the T8's RCA inputs, though a pair of balanced are available. I'm then out to my Mac MHA 100 with VU meters, ooh, VU meters, uh, which I use as a speaker amp to drive the heresies. Now down in the corner, I have a budget Klipsch 10 inch sub, which does the job. It's just fine. At night, when the lights go down and the tone poets come out, the system sounds pretty good, uh, like I said. But I wondered if I could squeeze a little more out of it. Did the T8 juice it? Well, we'll find out after we enjoy a few glamour shots, and I'll tell you more about it. The Duke T8 Pro is a seven-band parametric equalizer with two 6H1NBN rollable tubes from a country we shall not mention. Those tubes are underlit 
by orange LEDs for maximum effect as the raw tubes don't have much glow. It weighs a pound and a half and retails for $129 or less. There is an OG 5-band version with a headphone amp for $10 less. That's just a two $5 foot long price delta. I say whenever you can, go pro, unless you need a mediocre headphone amp. The seven adjustments are at 50, 125, 315, 750, 2K, 6K, and 16K. There's a power selector switch, volume and balance on the front, RCA and balanced ins and outs on the back, and that's it. Now back in the 70s before you were born, in the days of muskrat love and afternoon delight, the graphic equalizer, as it was called then, was king. Huge boxes you could stack on your other components. I think most people bought them for the dancing LED displays or spectrum analyzers, I think they were called. The more channels, the more lights. As far as the sound goes, most people just boosted the bass to distortion as I don't think subs were really a big thing yet. The lights were the draw. After all, it was the disco era. Did I have a massive graphic equalizer then? Well, guilty as charged, Your Honor. If I remember correctly, I had a 12-band techniques. Imagine that, 12 bands applied to each channel. That's 24 sliders. That's more sliders than George Martin used when he mixed Sgt. Peppers, I think. That's a lot, and for me, the novelty wore off pretty fast, and I settled on ogling at the uh, dancing lights. Is it ogling or is it ogling? Put it in the comments below. It was still fun, though. Don't get me wrong. Seven bands are much easier to handle, and they can be used to great effect. Each of the Duke's seven bands applies EQ to both channels, and each knob has a plus-minus of 6 dB adjustment and a click stop at 12 o'clock. For evaluation, I turned my sub off and threw on the super fantastic reissue of Talking Heads Stop Making Sense on vinyl. Admittedly, I've been on a T-Heads kick lately. I think SMS is an audiophile live recording. I found that the adjustments that best suited my hearing, the room, and the permanent speaker placement were the two knobs at either side of the scale. The Heresies, despite their 12-inch woofer, have never been accused of being bass monsters. Um, they were definitely reinforced by the Duke. A couple clicks of treble at 6 and 16 brought out more detail and soundstage for me, and oddly, I think, actually helped define the bass a little more. I don't know how that works. Adjustments on that end might introduce more record noise, though, so be cautious, all right, when you implement those. If I wanted more David Byrne and his big suit, uh, a small clockwise twist at, say, 2K, and there he was. Now, your mileage may vary. These are not huge, earth-shattering improvements, but the Duke patched some of the problems with my speaker placement and room dimensions and made the music a little more exciting and bold. And above all, it was fun to use. Adjusting the sound in this way is highly subjective, but I don't think there is any wrong or right setting if you're enjoying the music. It was definitely fun to play with. In addition, the small footprint of the Duke allowed me to conveniently place it within reach, right next to my turntable. I felt like a real DJ. Oh, I am a real DJ. <laughs> super convenient, super fun, super accessible, super usable. That's the T8 Pro. Oh, and did those tubes bring anything to the party? Well, what do you want the answer to be? I don't think they hurt the cause. I don't know if they warmed anything up, really, but they looked warm. Come on, you just want to look at those pretty lights, don't you? Man, I, I envy reviewers that can put five components in a chain and then get on camera and tell you exactly what each one is adding or taking away from the sound. I mean, those guys have superpowers. I'm a mere mortal. Remember, this is a $100 FunFi product, not a Macintosh 275. The tubes could be an issue if you need to stack your gear, so I'll uh, also give you that cautionary tip. What's my takeaway? Eat at home a couple of nights this week and, and put the saved cash toward the Duke T8 Pro EQ. If you want to have a little subjective fun jacking with your sound profile, it's small, it's fun, it's useful, and it could be your first foray into the wonderful world of tubes. Yay, tubes! I'm going to hang on to this loner as long as I can. <laughs> Don't tell Randy. Hey, see you next time in the United States of Analog.